So today I want to review the National Geographic Carbon Fiber 114 millimeter Newtonian Telescope. You can get this for around sixty to eighty dollars. Um, pretty good prices everywhere from eBay to Sam's Club, even uh, sometimes even on Amazon. Saw it on sale last year for around thirty to forty bucks around Christmas time. Uh, wish I had actually seen it during the sale so I could have spent thirty dollars as opposed to sixty dollars for it. But for sixty bucks. You really can't go wrong. Definitely recommend this over a little guy like this. I mean, these, you can find all sorts of different varieties of these on Amazon, Walmart, everywhere. And they also sell for around $60 $80, sometimes even $100. Usually have about a 70 millimeter lens, maybe a 50 millimeter lens. They come with these usually Kellner style optics. They're okay, but for the price, this guy is fantastic. It comes with two plossal lenses, a 26 millimeter and a 9.7 millimeter, give you a pretty good range of magnifications and fields of view. Definitely have pretty good eye relief, especially on the 26 millimeter one. Compare that to a 20 millimeter that comes with a counter, you can see how much better that would be on your eyes. Additionally, comes with a 2x Barlow lens. What this will do is double the magnification effectively for each eyepiece. So you just put the eyepiece into your Barlow lens like this, slot it into the focus adjustment slot, and there you go. You've doubled your magnification essentially, basically doubling the focal length of this particular telescope, which coincidentally the fo uh, focal length is 500 millimeters, and the focal length is the distance from the, the primary mirror here up to the secondary mirror and up to the focuser and to the eyepiece that you have placed inside. So 500 millimeters, uh, which is pretty good. Um, so that makes this about a f4.2 uh, telescope. Um, inside you can see the mirror is, uh, when it came to me, it's nice and clean. It's not a Bird Jones. I saw several reviewers who said this was a Bird Jones. It is not. There's no additional optical component in there. Um, additionally, uh, you can collimate this. So it comes with these nice collimation screws. So you just loosen these screws here and then you make your adjustments, tighten the screw back down and you're good to go. Uh, make sure you do that with the proper collimating cap or a Cheshire or something in here, making sure that you align the mirrors up and get a proper image out here. Mine came collimated very nicely. It looked pretty much spot on. Uh, my biggest issue with this telescope is actually the tripod itself. Not the telescope, but the tripod. Uh, the tripod has this nice fluid motion in the azimuth position. So left to right, it makes very easy movements. Um, that's because it has this nice uh, pad underneath the metal on uh, metal here that separates the metal from each other. I don't know if it's Teflon or PTFE or something that makes this pretty smooth. What you do is you loosen the knob that's here on, on the base pretty much all the way so that there's nothing impeding the movement and you get this nice fluid motion and wherever you leave it, it stays there. Problem ends up being in uh, the altitude adjustment. So it's really hard to adjust using uh, this adjustment knob here to get it to a point where it won't just collapse on itself or it becomes too difficult to raise up or down. And, and by too difficult, I mean when you try and raise it up, you raise it up too far because you don't have that fine adjustment. If you loosen it, you'll now get that fine adjustment, but when you let go, it just falls. And you definitely don't want this falling down because you can't keep anything in, in, in focus. That's more of a problem when you're up above about 30 degrees. Speaking of quality, I'm going to share some images here now of what you can do with this telescope. So one is the image of the moon. And definitely you can get very high quality images of the moon, but that's true of any telescope, including something like that, right? But you can also see some of the planets. So you can see Jupiter. Uh, you can see the different stripe patterns that are, are on Jupiter due to uh, the cloud structures that are there. You can even see the great red spot, although faintly, uh, you can make it out. And to, to do that, you'll really need the, the 9.7 with the 2x Barlow, effectively making this about a four and a half millimeter uh, eyepiece. You can also see Saturn and its rings, or its rings bundled together. You're not gonna see really individual rings. Uh, you might be able to see some separation of uh, the Cassini division, but generally speaking, you just see rings and the planet. And the first time I saw that, I was like, wow, fantastic. And the same thing happens to other people. They're like, holy cow, Saturn really does have rings. It's like, why didn't you believe it? Everybody's telling you that. Uh, also Mars shown here, 
Um, Mars is definitely uh, something you can see with this telescope. Shows up different shades of red. You can even see the, the different ice caps that are on there, which is pretty cool. They show up kind of this whitish color. Um, all in all, I'm pretty happy with this telescope. Uh, the tripod is actually fairly sturdy, especially if you put it on the grass and you kind of dig it into the ground. It has kind of pointed ends on it that allows you to do that. Uh, I've made a Dobsonian mount for this um, that I've designed, and I'll share another video that explains uh, that mount. And the beauty of that mount is it actually will do the altitude adjustment without much problem and hold that position and get nice, clear, or, or smooth motions there. Um, additionally, this telescope does come with a camera adapter. I don't recommend using it. Um, it uses suction cups to attach to the phone. Well, if you have a case like me, it doesn't really work. And I don't want to keep taking my case on and off to try and use it. For about $15, you can get a universal adapter that will fit onto this telescope and work just fine. Um, and so you can take pictures of your phone, or if you have other adapters, you can take uh, the eyepiece off. If you have, say, like a mirrorless camera, a DSLR, um, I have a mirrorless camera. I just put a mount or an adapter on it and mount it directly to the eyepiece here. Works just great. Anyway, uh, that's the National Geographic Carbon Fiber 114 millimeter Telescope. I hope uh, you learned something from this. Hopefully this helped you in your decision making. Um, generally, I like this telescope. Great beginner scope. Uh, great for anybody that just wants to get into the hobby. And I think you'll appreciate it more than some of those other refracting telescopes. A little bit more challenging to use, but you get more out of it as a result. As always, you can spend more money, get a bigger version of this, say a 5 inch or a 6 inch, even an 8 inch, 10 inch, however big you want to go. And uh, in which case, you know, you're going to be spending two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars or more on that. But for under a hundred bucks, it's hard to go wrong with this. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care.